Hello friends. My name is Jay Chandranaidu Sakamuri. I'm a PhD student from Tech University of Denmark. I hold a master degree from Indian Institute of Technology. I also help students to pursue higher education in India and also abroad. In this particular video, I will explain you the requirements for to pursue masters in Canada. So without wasting much time, let's go into the presentation. This is the uh, agenda. So um, I will mainly explain to you um, what are the admission requirements uh, and also um, what are the documents that you need to upload and uh, where, what are the deadlines to apply for masters in Canada along with is there any possibility for scholarship uh, and also what are the visa requirements and uh, is there any opportunity to work for part time and uh, what are the job opportunities after masters. So let's go into the details. First of all, before going further, let us uh, find out the reason why Canada, why, why to study masters in Canada. I think uh, according to me, there are, these are the following six reasons uh, that motivates anyone to pursue master in Canada. The first reason is Canada has very good education institutions and they are they are providing with uh, high very good quality education and uh, good research they are among the best in the world like uh, there are many universities in top 200 world ranking so this is the first reason the second reason is uh, it's uh, the students coming to canada uh, there are um, they are from many countries different countries they come here and study so it has very cultural uh, diversity and also tolerance to accommodate international students so this is uh, the second reason coming to the third reason tuition fee is very low in canada compared to us or australia and uh, apart from the lower tuition fee there are uh, more research assistantship and teaching assistantships available and also there are other scholarship that, that, that support students um, for living expenses etc the fourth reason is along with the scholarship student also allowed to work part-time anywhere he can work for a few hours to uh, to earn some money to support his studies the fifth reason is after completion of your masters student uh, student get uh, up to three years of um, work permit so it's it's nice right uh, to to uh, gain some work experience in the same country where you are studying masters so this will actually boost the career further so i think it's a one of the good opportunity and of course the sixth reason it's very very beautiful country and also safe country so if you visit countryside you can see a lot of lakes natural lakes so of course it's a very beautiful country very big country too so Let's go. What are the let's see what are the universities that are in Canada, particularly those or those are offering technical education. You know, I have given some list of universities here. You can see, uh, of course, it's well known universities worldwide, like University of Toronto, University of British Columbia, University of Alberta, or University of Victoria, University of Waterloo. There are many, there are many, many. I have only provided some here but only few I have provided here you can go to the uh, at least you can go to the wiki and search there are many many good universities all universities are almost good but just you need to concentrate on your studies so of course there are public and private universities you can choose uh, the university according to your uh, your uh, wishes and also according to the uh, uh, your um, academic and also work experience and next what are the master programs that are offered in from canadian universities by canadian universities i think there are um, there are two kinds of masters they are offering the first one is thesis based masters that means student is uh, more concentrated uh, more concentrated on the thesis 60 to 70 percent uh, research work and 30 to 40 percent coursework I think this is this is very good if you want to pursue 
if you want to pursue um, PhD or if you want to continue in a research organization later. So depending on the university, they call it as a different, uh, the names are different, like Master of Science or Master of Applied Science, Master of Engineering Science, Master of Engineering Thesis. These all are thesis-based masters. The second category comes course-based masters. Whereas it is non-thesis-based, that means here there will be mostly uh, student will be studying only courses or sometimes maybe a part of uh, some 10 to 20 percent thesis in some cases so uh, it normally the duration of this uh, thesis uh, course based masters is around one to two years uh, normally one year i would say and uh, yeah but if you want to work in, a, in an industry that has a uh, as an engineer then the, maybe this course is sufficient Apart from engineering uh, course, uh, thesis uh, course-based masters, there is also Master of Arts, Master of Law, Master of Education. These are also course-based masters if you want to pursue. Apart from masters, of course, you can also pursue PhD program. And um, what are the admission requirements? So let's go to the general requirements, of course. Um, all these requirements that I'm going to tell now, they are already uh, mentioned in each uh, particular website of that university. So you need not to remember here, just I'm giving you the overall generic requirements. Of course, you must have a completed bachelor degree with a good academic, academic uh, grades, I would say. Um, as per Canadian GPA, grade point average, you should have at least three out of four. Few universities are also asking 3.5 out of 4 or 4.5. So normally, <clears throat> final year students also can apply, but they should uh, show a proof or proof a letter from the their home university saying that uh, they will uh, complete the degree before before actually the master program starts. So as I said, the uh, academic percentage is very important. Academic grades. Uh, if you can, if you ask what is the percentage required for Indian students, uh, it, at least you should have sixty percent first class in in your bachelor's. But yeah, if you if you have like eighty percent, that is definitely it will fetch your chances to get uh, into masters. To uh, normally, they um, you need to convert the GPA. So in in some universities, you need to convert the, your percentage or or other, any other system into the Canadian GPA. For that, I found University of Manitoba website. They have given a, a, a methodology with examples how to convert your your country specific um, grades into Canadian GPA. So I have given you the links here. You can uh, you can check in these links how to convert your your grades. And also, apart from the academic uh, requirements, you, you should have some English language proficiency. So let's go into the details. Suppose if you if you have if you were um, basic uh, your education starting from your schooling until your bachelor's, if it is in English, then normally some universities that you need not to um, go for these tests like TOEFL or IELTS. Uh, but to apply for scholarships some universities even though you have the education in english they ask this test so i would there are many tests for english but i would say TOEFL or ielts ielts or ielts whatever it is um, i recommend these two because they are internationally recognized any country you can take this test so for TOEFL uh, in canadian universities if it is internet-based internet test, they are asking about 85 to 100, 100 uh, overall score. In each section, they, you need to have at least 20 to 21, some maximum 21 sometimes. For paper-based test, it is uh, from 550 to 580, you should have that score. For IELTS, you should uh, take IELTS Academic and uh, 
the minimum score or average score that you require is 6.5 band to 7. Uh, but individual sections you should have at least 5.5 to 6.5 depending on the university yeah of course there are other tests uh, like uh, cambridge certificate of advanced english or other tests but i don't go in, i don't want to go into those details you can uh, get those details in the given links below i have also given the links for toefl and ielts so you can uh, find out the details if you're not familiar with that so next we will discuss about what is what are the application what is the application procedure how to apply yeah for m engineering that is a course based masters you can apply directly to the university so you can go uh, you can go to the university website and uh, uh, put a online application there is no need to contact the professor uh, because uh, there is no research in this course for thesis based masters that is it's also called research based masters like master of science it is normally required to contact the professors so you need to send your uh, documents like your cv your academic grades and if you, if you have any work experience details all these details to the professor and you also you should also send your statement of motivation and your research interest to the professor then professor will evaluate your your application and after getting yes uh, okay from professor then you can apply online in that particular website university website so that means most of the universities there you need to contact the professor first you need to get the approval from professor but for few universities you need not to do that a few universities you can directly apply just like a uh, uh, non thesis based masters but in the application you can mention uh, two, two names of the two to three professors under whom you want to work so based on the research matches between research interest of yours and also the professors and of, anyway you need to do uh, do this you need to uh, apply online after applying online you need to upload the documents also supporting documents so it's a two-part process first apply after that upload the documents so then what are the required documents first of all you need to have a scanned copy of passport and your degree certificate so even if if are final year students they normally they don't have degree certificate they can also apply but with a letter from the from their home university scanned copies of bachelor transcripts Transcripts nothing but individual mark list that semesters wise mark list they are getting that you need to upload Of course copies of English language proficiency test to for IELTS based on other tests sometimes you need to send these uh, Results to the uh, to the university you know, from the TOEFL website itself Otherwise most of the universities you can send a copy uh, a copy of the result card of course, you need to update, uh, uh, update, upload the your updated CV. So your CV should contain what is the motivation to pursue this master, to the two lines, and also your academic background. And if you have any work experience or internships, those details, and your extracurricular activities that are relevant to uh, extracurricular co-curricular activities, if you have any, you should highlight that in the CV. So that you can um, maybe make a two to three pages CV mostly don't don't uh, go more than that apart from this you need to also submit a letter of motivation or in some universities they call it as a statement of interest or statement of purpose uh, depending on the university uh, sometimes uh, for PhD students it's a mandatory requirement of course but for sometimes for master students in, in uh, for few university it may not be required but anyway if you prepare well that is useful at least to send an email to professor so prepare a letter of motivation of course apart from this you need to also submit two to three reference uh, letters reference or recommendation letters from your professors or if you're working in a company one from your your supervisor uh, of course but you can also submit these two letters from the your uh, university itself 
from the old university. You need not to upload the uh, reference letters, but instead of that, you need to provide the um, contact details of those persons or those professors. Then the Canadian University directly contact the professor uh, for the recommendation letter. So that is the thing. Remember this. You need not to apply. That means before giving any references, you should talk to your professors and mention that which university you are applying so that they will they will check it so that they won't miss miss those email so then when they uh, what are the application uh, when is the application period and uh, when is the deadlines for the canadian universities let's go into the de those details in canada normally they the intakes are three or four per academic year like um, there are different semester like fall, winter, summer. So some universities, few universities offer three and few universities offer four semesters, four intakes per academic year. I have given the deadlines here. You can go through that. Normally for fall semester, uh, January or March, they starts in January or March, but until April. April is the deadline of the same year. So similarly for winter, summer I have given here. I don't repeat here. You can uh, watch it later and then next uh, come to the tuition fee tuition fee and what are the living expenses and scholarships etc tuition fee in canada of course it is uh, lesser than usa uh, but as an international student you need to pay tuition fee it is approximately from 10000 canadian dollars to 15000 uh, most of the universities this is the range but few universities it is very high uh, for example yeah, University of British Columbia or some other universities. I don't remember exactly how much, but it is it is somewhere, somewhere around eighteen to twenty thousand. And um, for scholarship, as I mentioned, if you are offered an admission into Master of Science program, then professor will automatically provide you the some some scholarship, some money. That is normally sufficient to pay the fee and a little bit of living expenses. But apart from that, there is also some university they offer student uh, cooperation opportunities in the form of teaching assistance or research assistantship. In addition to this, um, there are some other external scholarship specific to your country. Also, in general, you can you can refer to the university websites for more details. Of course, there are many many scholarships in Canada. And coming to the cost of living, it is uh, depends on you how much you spend, but normally it varies from seven hundred dollars to one thousand dollars per month, Canadian dollars per month. In which uh, room rent is, it starts. It may be from three hundred dollars to five hundred, depending on the uh, where you live. Most of the universities they have their own uh, campus accommodation. Uh, strictly maybe i recommend you to go for the um, campus accommodation at least in the first year so that you will know you will uh, get you will know the surroundings and um, then you will use to the surroundings then better then you can go you can go to the uh, private accommodation then what are the what is the selection criteria normally the professors or respective universities they evaluate your application based on the following criteria of course you should have a, a good academic grades if you have a, a good percentage if you are coming from india if you have more than 70 or near 80 percent definitely it will be a added advantage for you but don't worry if you have even lesser you can still apply in that case maybe you should have uh, work experience or if you have some papers uh, that is uh, that will help you of course if you write a good motivation letter and uh, if you get good reference letters from your professors and uh, as i said relevant work experience and internships and uh, some papers publications one or two journal or um, conference publications that will that will increase that will makes your application strong so that means if you if you are planning for masters in canada plan it from second year so you you should have you plan for some internships on some technical papers write some paper at least one or two so this will definitely 
um, uh, tell the professors or communicate the professor that you are interested in research. So you are serious about uh, masters. Of course, you, you should have good English language skills. Then coming to the visa requirements. Actually, visa is required when after you were after you get the admission letter. So that means this this step is not during the application. This is after the after you get the uh, offer letter. I would say after you get the admission. So for as a student, uh, you need to apply a study permit in Canada. For that, you need a letter of acceptance or offer letter from the university. Once you get this letter, you can directly go to the immigration website and you can um, uh, you can uh, apply there. Of course, I'm sorry there is a spelling mistake here. Tuition, uh, tuition fee. Yeah. So the other requirements is you should have enough money to pay for your tuition fee, and also you need to suppose if you are not paying tuition fee, you should show uh, a scholarship offer letter that is required and you should also show funds in your bank account that you uh, approximately ten thousand dollars per per year uh, to meet the living expenses if your family members are also there coming with you then you need to add uh, some more money so that means you need to have two two uh, you need to have bank account for uh, you know, two purpose tuition fee and living expenses of course you should uh, you should not have any criminal record <laughs> that means if you are if you have that you are even though if you are a very, very good student you will not be offered a visa and uh, you must be in good health conditions of course this is required a medical examination is required so for more details I recommend you to go through this uh, uh, link given below this, this is the link for uh, Canada citizenship and immigration website go through this uh, once you get the letter of acceptance from the university now part-time work and job opportunities normally every student has this question can I work part-time during my study answer is yes of course if you if you are granted a study permit in Canada, you are automatically also granted, that means automatically granted a permission to work for 20 hours per week, part time. So in, in, uh, in, in, uh, during semester holidays, you can work more, that means you can work full time. But remember, you, you are going to Canada to study or to do research. So I don't run behind this uh, part time work just work for if you if you want some money for to meet your living expenses work for some time and then remaining time concentrate on your studies concentrate because that will pay you at the end because it, it may land uh, it may help you to get to get a job or your professor may also uh, recommend you for a PhD if you are serious about it so don't waste time and much on the part-time work so here um university of alberta has given you a link what are the different part-time words that you can choose i have given you that uh, link here the youtube link you can go through that then coming to the job opportunities after masters so as i mentioned the good thing about canada is after your masters you are allowed to stay there you are you will get a work permit up to maximum of three years that means it doesn't mean that you will get three years but if your masters is two years you'll get two years that means it's equivalent to your duration of masters i would say you'll get a business permit so this will really help you to work there for some time to gain the experience and later if you want you can continue there or you can come back to your home country depending on depending on you so at least three years they are giving that's a good thing so the details they are given in this uh, link you go through that of course, if you complete masters, uh, research-based masters in Canada, you are open to job opportunities across Canada, different provinces of Canada, and also anywhere in the world. The main thing you should remember is because it's research-based masters, you are there is a chance that you can convert your masters to PhD. 
So if you show that, uh, if you show your interest to professor, maybe professor will recommend you. So remember, work hard. So yeah, and also you are open, you open to apply for PhD anywhere, like in Europe or India, or China, anywhere, anywhere in Canada, US, anywhere. So that's all. Thank you very much. So I think I have covered the, in this presentation I have covered mainly why Canada and what are the application requirements, how to apply, what are the visa requirements, so what makes your application stronger, these things, and also uh, details about the part-time work and, uh, and uh, job opportunities after masters. I hope this video is helpful for you. If you still have any questions or in the application process, uh, you are welcome to contact me. You can uh, contact me in the form of comments in the below video in the YouTube, or you can always send me an email as given, uh, given the email address here. Thank you once again. Bye-bye.